Bob Shelley. So a moon day or a Monday discussion continues with the great Jordan Maxwell, which again, his website is jordanmaxwellshow.com. This is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. Once again, you can join the research society there for a one-time fee. Go much deeper into the subjects we've discussed tonight and many, many others, including the monetary system, government itself, the idea of identity politics obviously is in there a bit, but more historically than current events, it seems like, because, you know, really people don't understand the history to begin with. And hey, seems like that matches the same description when you go under the religious uh, tab in the research society. You got to see it for yourself. A lot of images, resources, and links to resources there that you will not see anywhere else in the research society. Also, a couple of videos over there you can get directly from the source, Jordan Maxwell himself, because, again, this is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. It is jordanmaxwellshow.com, and you could download and watch those videos on demand, I think, for a very small fee over there. I know you've only got a couple up, but there are more to come, and... um there's going to be more to the site anyway as it goes. There's also a public section. Obviously, look at it. You can email Jordan directly, ask him a question, send him feedback about this show or any other. You can uh, make a donation over there because this is uh, one of the ways that Jordan is allowed to survive is based on your donations. Uh, and uh, he has little else to work with. So, obviously, those are always appreciated over at jordanmaxwellshow.com. There is a PayPal button. And, uh, like I said, email him, donate to him, interact with him, join the Research Society. It is the only website that is actually Jordan Maxwell's, jordanmaxwellshow.com. So we were taking some questions here. Now, I've only got one more loaded up. If anybody wants to enter them in, obviously, again, info at Ocelli.com, Twitter over, uh, you know, at Ocelli.com, on Skype, Charles.Ocelli. I will gladly take the questions and enter them in as soon as I get them and have a chance to. Now, if you're hearing this on a replay, no worries. You can send me the questions, and I'll save them for the next time I sit down with Jordan, as I have done tonight for the most part. Um, there is one live question coming in, but I have, I have one still backed up. So we'll, let's clear out the first one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jordan, as we continue the discussion here, here is this question. And this is, uh, from somebody who says his name is Bob. I'm not sure that that's his name. I, I actually think cause he, he sent it in an email and didn't give an email return address or anything like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with the name Bob for now. Um, Jordan, is there an actual location for the garden of Eden as it's described in the old Testament? Many people make, uh, well, you know, many people do presentations about that. So is there a, a an actual location for the fabled Garden of Eden in the Old Testament, Jordan? Uh, I think perhaps there is. I think perhaps there is. But I do believe that that was probably the story of the great flood in the Old Testament, the great flood of Noah's day. I believe that story is actually telling us an older story of the of the story of Atlantis. I believe the Bible is talking about Atlantis when it tells us the story of Noah and the ark and the great flood of of Noah's day because it says actually in the Bible that the great floodgates of the deep opened up and the land fell into the ocean. The, uh, the floodgates of the of the ocean opened up because we know that rain, scientifically, uh, if it rained 40 days and 40 nights, would not be enough rain to cover the highest mountain. That's not going to possibly happen. You're not going to have that much water on the earth to cover the highest mountain, so it was not a worldwide flood. It was not something that covered the highest mountain on the earth. No. The mountains were caused by some kind of a catastrophe, yes. But the, it was not the great flood. The great flood was local. It was a local flood. And the idea, going back to 
that when the flood happened, it, was, it says the Bible says that it not only rained for forty days and forty nights, but that the great flood, uh, the great waters of the deep opened up. It, the idea being that there was some kind of an earthquake where the waters of the deep opened up and the land fell into the opening. Well, that's what we're told happened to Atlantis, that there was a great catastrophe, flood or something, where Atlantis sunk overnight, instantly sunk overnight into the ocean and was gone forever. I believe that that what we're talking about in the book of Genesis is about Atlantis. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Now, if there was a place where Adam and Eve were being created in a garden of paradise, I think there probably was. And most likely that was some kind of a place that was on Atlantis or maybe in uh, in the Mediterranean somewhere where the extraterrestrials who came here and messed with our DNA and recreated us, they obviously had to take whoever these these creatures were that they were going to operate on and crossbreed with them, they had to put that female into a protective area where the other animals couldn't uh, harm her and, and because she was going to be given birth to an extraterrestrial birth. And so that's why she was put into some kind of a protective environment which is exactly what we would do today. If you're going to take one particular animal and you're going to crossbreed with that animal, you would take it out of the herd, out of the group, and put it someplace where it's going to be safe while you work on it, while you work your experiment on it. I think that's exactly what happened with the story of Adam and Eve, that somebody came here from out there, off-world entities came here, and saw the indigenous creatures and said, hmm, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture is saying that somebody came here from out there. Well, what's out there? Well, God's out there. Well, maybe God came here and said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let's make him look like us. And so then later on the scripture says, God says, here man has become as one of us. He's like us. He looks like us. And he's just like us. And so I think that there was a place in particular somewhere on the earth, probably in the Atlantic somewhere on, on Atlantis, uh, or... That's where it would have to be, would be on Atlantis or in somewhere in the Mediterranean where the uh, where that paradise, uh, or that Garden of Eden was mm. actually a real place where uh, the real creatures were being dealt with by extraterrestrials because we now are seeing all kinds of signs that there were extraterrestrials here who came from other planets, who came from other worlds out there in space. And you ask any child if you believe in God, yes, where is God? And he will point out there. So God's out there. Well, what do you mean out there? What is the out there? Well, it's heaven. Well, God's in heaven. That's right. He's out there in the heavens. And, uh, and he came here. And he saw the indigenous creatures that were here, the, the Neanderthal creatures who had evolved here, and said, hmm, come, let us, who's us, more than one, mm -hmm. let us make man in our image, after our likeness. This is what a rabbi told me many years ago, a very high-ranking rabbi, he's still alive today. He told me that uh, it does, the Bible does not say God created man. The Bible says God recreated man. It says in Genesis one twenty eight that God said, Come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Uh, and then after man was made, it was the the, comb the commandment was, Go forth and multiply and replenish the earth. 
And I said to the rabbi, is that a correct translation when it says replenish the earth? Yes, that's exactly what it meant. Well, re, R-E, means do it again. He said, that's exactly right. Hmm. Because uh, there was a great flood in Genesis 6, I think it is, Genesis 6, 1, where after the great flood of Noah's day, when the when the uh, when the ark we're told when the ark came to sit on dry land, that uh, God said to Noah and his sons and wives, "Go forth and multiply and replenish the earth." Well, of course, and I, the rabbi said, "Of course, if God has destroyed all life with the great flood, and He wants humans on the earth, He's created the earth for us." Right. Well, then we're going to have to re, R E, do again, replenish the earth. Not plenish, replenish. <clears throat> and that's why it says in Genesis 1, when God created Adam and Eve, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the word was, go forth and replenish the earth again. So therefore, Adam and Eve were not the first humans. They were not the first intelligent creatures on the earth. They were a remaking of man. Go forth and remake man again. Right. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So it's a remaking of the human family. And so we have now things called, there's a whole study in science of pre-idemic man. Pre-idemic means before Adam even was created, there was already man on the earth. So you can say God did not create man. God merely recreated man. He came here and said, do it again. And so right. let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So and now we look like the gods who came here and created us. And right. that's why they, that's why when I hear people saying that they've had, uh, you know, one on one confrontations with extraterrestrials who look like humans well that's what makes sense to me because that's what the bible says well, god said come mm -hmm. let us make man in our image after our likeness not make man no man's already here let's remake him to look like us and be like us and well, then the scripture says later that man here, man has become as one of us. He looks like us. Right. Also note, this is us. This is we. This is not one. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, we, we're in God's image as in one God. We are in the God's image. Well, seems as though there was a plural attached to that. Anyway, uh, a live, a live Twitter question, <laughs> which, uh, I think this is the first time I've taken a question directly from Twitter. Uh, for you, Jordan, because I, I put it out there. So we got one, didn't we? Um, and the question reads exactly as follows. This is from, uh, the Twitter handle is one minute to midnight, uh, which is, uh, somebody that I know listens to the show all the time. Anyway, uh, can he speak at all to the idea that the Flavians actually created Christianity in order to quell the messianic Jews? Question mark. That's the whole question, exactly as it was tweeted to me, Jordan. Uh, that, the, that the Pleiadians created Christianity? The Flavians. He spelled it F-L-A-V-I-A-N-S. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. No um, problem. Yes. I think that's, yes, there is something to that. I think that there is enough uh, evidence to show that the, the Flavians did create Christianity. The Romans created it. There was a Roman family called the. It was a in line for the Caesar of Rome, were called the Flavians, and they they created Christianity. Yes, I, that story is on the web. You could go and watch it. It's a there was quite a bit of, of uh, videos on that subject, and I think there is something to it because it makes sense that the Romans would come up with the idea of Christianity. Uh, right, and you see references. That's where it came from. You know, that's why today uh, the Vatican says they are the original Christianity. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about Rome. Well, and, and here you go for somebody who maybe doesn't necessarily recognize the uh, the the word Flavians. 
Uh, you know, it was well, a family name. Yeah, it was the name of a family. Julius Flavor, Flavius Caesar. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's the house. Uh, and, and the, there you have the Julian order and the house of, uh, Julius, which Julius Flavius. That's part of Julius Caesar's name. Just yep, so people right. understand that. Okay. Yep. Uh, but, but please continue. I just want to throw that in in case somebody was thrown by that. I know you, you're not, Jordan. I mean, <laughs> you've forgotten more than most people know about these things. I'm just saying that, uh, that I just felt that that was a good thing to put in there as well. Um, but it, it does seem rather interesting that, uh, it would be a political and also a spiritual solution. Oh. You know what? Here comes something else. This one is on email, though. <laughs> um, you have not discussed witchcraft in uh, in regards to the spoken word aloud and song. Ooh, okay. And I would like to know, does Jordan know anything about the use of sound when it comes to magical practices? In various religious orders, including Christianity. I think that's what we talked about already. I, I, yes, I thought so too, but anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I, I think we talked about that, and we established yes, there is a very definite connection between uh, humans with your human brain being able to co-mingle with the spirit world, you, you're opening yourself up to the spirit world uh, by sounds. And this is why uh, there's always been chanting. The chantings are being done mm -hmm. by all the ancient religions in the world because chanting, the Bible calls Satan, that says Satan when he was created, uh, he, was, he was given pipes. He was the god of pipes and sounds. I thought that's interesting. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that says Satan, when he came into the picture, he was the god of pipes and sounds and music. He was a musical god. Mm. And this is why the word muse, muse was, were a term that was given to the angels in the book of uh, Hesiod, the Theogony of Hesiod. Hesiod was an ancient Greek who said he had one-on-one -on -one communications and conversations with spirit angels from another world. They came here and talked with him, and he said they, they told him they called themselves muses, which mm -hmm. gives us our word music, amusement, museum, amusement. Uh, muses were spirit entities, and this is why we have something called music. Mm -hmm. Because these spirits are communicating with us in, in, our, in our brains with frequencies, with radio frequencies, with musical frequencies. And, uh, and so, yes, there is a definite connection between the use of, uh, of, of sounds and chants, etc., in, in our religious services because we mm -hmm. are actually communicating with the spirit world when you're hearing these chants, Gregorian well, chants, etc. And this goes across cultures and across religions. I mean, uh, most of the things that you just attributed to Satan, in fact, are, are, are things that could be easily attributed to the pre-Christian god Apollo. Uh, of course. You know, uh, yep. again, the, the lord of the muses, if you will. And, uh, uh, various things like that. Got another Twitter question. <laughs> uh, Joseph Green asks, uh, okay, let's see. How, how, excuse me. How does Jordan feel about Charles Fort? Is the oh, question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've talked about him, I think, on your show. You, you sure Charles have. Charles <laughs> Fort. The book, the book Charles Fort wrote was given to me when I was 19 years old as a gift from a man that I am sure was not fully human. And he suggested that I should read a book, and he gave me a copy. It was called The Complete Works of Charles Fort. And I think that the book of Charles Fort is probably the most phenomenally fascinating book you'll ever, you'll ever pick up. You can still get it today in bookstores. You can order it easy. You can go on my website. You can go on my website, jordanmaxwellshow.com, 
and and on there you will see a, 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 a folder, a, a little flyer that says recommended materials. Those are the books I highly recommend. And Charles Fort is on there. Look for the complete works of Charles Fort on recommended materials and just click on it. It'll take you right to Amazon to order it. It's called The Complete Works of Charles Fort and what that book does, it'll blow your mind. It tells you what Charles Fort did was he took, uh, he went to libraries and he was able to, he had some sort of a, of a retirement or, or some, some sort of money from his family so he didn't have to work. So he spent many years going through the library in New York and going through all the big libraries looking up all the strangest experiences that have ever happened on the earth that, that Science has no explanation for whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And he outlines in footnotes in every paragraph, he talks about some strange incident that happened in the world that nobody has any idea to explain it at all. And then he tells you where it was written, who wrote the article, where you can find it if you want to do your own research. It's a gold mine of occultism. It's a gold mine of hidden knowledge right. about strange things which have happened on the earth that nobody can explain. And I was fascinated with the book back when I was 19 years old, when it was given to me by my girlfriend's father. It was a it was an strange experience when I met my girlfriend's father. He was not of this world. There's no doubt in my mind of that. And he suggested that I read this book, which I did, and it changed my life overnight because it's such a fascinating book. I love it. I still have a copy right here with me on my bookcase. There you go. So one other question has come in. Uh, I did this one uh, through the Skype, and so I have to roll it and be able to read it correctly here. So bear with me a second, Jordan. Um, okay. The... Uh, all right, I'll shorten this a little bit. The idea that the uh, the Bible is uh, divinely inspired and therefore it is the word of God is uh, is commonplace. Uh so this person is asking is not everything according to that sort of idea that is written by a man therefore not also divinely inspired? Or could it be argued that many things are divinely inspired? And since there are more than one, uh, since there are more than one sources for inspiration <laughs> among the gods, does that not mean that uh, various works of literature might have been inspired by different gods? Is this a subject that Jordan has an opinion on? Yes, I certainly do. That's exactly what I think. Is that when we talk about the gods, there is a spirit. World, there is a spirit world that is is leading us and guiding us. And as a matter of fact, I have a I have a quote right here in front of me. This is a quote from the Quran. Where is it? Hold on, just a minute. Oh no it's worries. Uh, I I find this question fascinating myself because uh, th this is one of the arguments I make all the time. Regarding, uh, uh, you know, anything in, in fact, to my mind, could easily be, you know, divinely inspired, and I'm holding up air quotes, because there is a, a spiritual significance to creativity in general. So therefore, it seems to me like uh, a work of art such as a painting or a sculpture or a piece of music could be also something that is uh, influenced by yes. the spirit world, and in fact, I think uh, the majority of it truly is, uh, especially, you know, things that are that are complex that seem to be, you know, you, you meet an artist who has created something that is just full of all these textures and interesting things, whether it's, again, music or writing or doesn't matter, and, and it's wild because you look at the person and you think to yourself, I don't even know how this came from this person. Um, I think it's easily explained that sometimes there's more of an influence from the spirit world than uh, than in other occasions, right? 
Um, There's no doubt about so that. So that's but the way exactly I see it. Right. But you had a quote from the Quran you were going to uh, give us here. Yeah, the, the quote from the Quran, and I'm looking for it right now. I thought I had it on my on my desktop. Well, no worries. Uh, you know, it, it's it's it, all right if you want to paraphrase. Here it, it. is. Yeah. Here it is. This is from Quran 15-9. Quran 15-9 says, quote, The gods are speaking. And it says, We, indeed, it was we who sent down the Quran to you. And indeed, we will be its guardians. End quote. Quran 15.9 says, Indeed, it was we who sent down the Quran to you, and indeed we will be its guardians. End quote. So there is a classic example of the gods giving to mankind their scriptures. So when we think, oh, well, the, the, uh, the holy ones of Israel, they wrote these holy scriptures. No, even the Quran. It says that in the Bible, it says that in many of the, all the other ancient le, uh, text, uh, texts of the world, the idea is that the spirit gods have given us our holy books. Mm -hmm. We have given you, we have sent down to you the Quran, and indeed we will be its guardians. That's what it says in the Quran. So what it's actually saying is somebody is telling the Islamic people, but they're not listening, we have given you a book called the Quran, mm. and indeed we will be its guardian. And you will read this book and you will believe it because we know how to manipulate you. We know how to have power over your mind. So we gave you the book, the Quran, and you just sit and read it, and we will put the spirit into you to believe the Quran. Now, now we, somebody might say, now somebody might say that it's almost foolish to assume that uh, you know a book fell from the sky, or that uh, you know uh, Moses, which we've covered on this show quite a bit, and talked about you know the, in this series uh, about the the stone tablets that allegedly had these laws that were written by God upon them. Right? Yeah. Um, this is symbolism. It, it's all symbolism, right? All of it is, and here's the point of it. What you do, because anybody would say, look, you can only prove that these things were written by man. Fine. I concede that point. But here's the problem. <laughs> if you concede that someone can be divinely inspired, someone can be demonically inspired, someone can be inspired by an ethereal being of any type to commit certain actions, whether they be positive or negative, whether they be to save lives or to take them or whether they be to do harm or to heal, one way or another, yes. then one if must you, also concede that, that, that the writing of these things is also directly inspired, not just the holy books, but a lot of things could easily well, Of course be, they are. Of course. Yeah. Anything man's writing is being inspired to write. Right. And so if you, held a, if you take a book, the Quran, into the Islamic world... And you say to the to the people there, you say to the Mohammedans there, how did you come by this book? Who wrote this book? Oh, well, we know the authors who wrote the book. Well, who, where did it come from? Where did the knowledge come from? Well, the book itself says, we who have sent down the Quran to you. Mm -hmm. And indeed, we will be its guardians. It was we who sent it down to you. Meaning that the whole book, when it was being written, was not coming from a man. It was coming from those who call themselves we. We sent it down to you. We're the ones that that inspired you with this with this book. We're the ones that put it into the the writer's mind to write this, these stories down that we put into your mind. So it was we who sent down the Quran to you. Mm -hmm. And we will be as guardians. We will protect it. We, who's we? The gods, Elohim, the gods, right. more than one. Right. And so that's the same thing as in the Bible. The Bible, the scripture says in Genesis 1, 
uh, in the beginning, the gods, G-O-D-S, more than one. In the beginning, the gods made the heavens and the earth. Not God, gods, more than one. Hmm. And so you go back to Genesis 128, when gods are creating Adam and Eve. <clears throat> it says, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So what Genesis 1 is saying is that we today have been remade. Somebody has remade us and, and messed with our DNA and our genetics. And uh, I'm thinking that if we were Neanderthal creatures, we were these cavemen kind of creatures thousands of years ago, and somebody came down here and saw us and said, let us make these these creatures. We look like cavemen roaming around. Uh, and and why don't we make them look like us and make them intelligent and put my and put a, a, a part of us in them? And overnight, we come out and we're writing beautiful music and designing lasers and television mm -hmm. and computers and beautiful poetry and music and all kinds of spiritually enlightening stuff coming from the human family. Yes, there's half of that. And then the other half is the, is the animal instinct in man. So we have the animal and the spiritual. Well, the spiritual came from they who came down and saw, and saw us and said, let us put ourselves in them. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And so what they did is they created a new kind of man. And the, the scripture actually says in Hebrew, uh, the term was ADM, not ADAM, not Adam, ADM, which simply means a different kind of creature. So we're going to make a different kind of creature out of the Peking or the cro man or the Neanderthal creatures, whoever these ancient, uh, what we call hominids in science, the hominid creatures, whatever they were, Somebody came down here and crossbred with the females and recreated a new kind of creature. That's us. We today are a our offspring of the gods that recreated us. And that's why I particularly feel that there's some kind of a connection between those ancient hominid creatures and the first time that, that the uh, extraterrestrials tried to recreate us in their image and likeness, they it was an experiment. And as with any experiment, you're not, you're not going to make it right the first time. So you have to experiment more than once. Maybe the first time the creature that they created when they crossbred these extraterrestrials with the hominid creatures, with the Neanderthals, Maybe their offspring were what we would call today Bigfoot, the Yetis, the, uh, the Bigfoot that we know that live in the forest of the world. They live all over the earth. We hear about Bigfoot everywhere. And he's called the abominable snowman. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of names for him. And so I'm thinking, well, they look like the uh, ancient Neanderthal creatures. They look like the ancient hominid creatures that we have skeletons for, but they seem to be far smarter than we are and far more fierce and, and frightening to us, these, uh, you know, these Bigfoot. And I think maybe Bigfoot is the first rendition of uh, what, what was given to us by these extraterrestrials when they put too much of themselves into that creature and not enough of something else and so they had to redo it again and ultimately they kept redoing it until they came up with us today modern day man mm. you know and it's even possible uh, some people look at the concept of evolution and uh, state that you know this is not uh, sensible and things like that but but let's let's reverse engineer that for a moment Let's imagine that for uh, the, po the, the argument's sake, that uh, this engineering that you're talking about could have even produced some of, you know, they say apes and humans are related. The DNA is a little bit similar. Okay. Um, well, you know, why, why wouldn't they be an experiment that just wasn't satisfactory? It didn't need to be destroyed, 
let's say, but it just wasn't quite all what they wanted it to be. That's and right. so we'll let them be because they're generally vegetarians and seem to have an order about them and they do have interactions and they are able to communicate and they're all right, but they're not exactly what we were shooting for. That's um, exactly right. So there's a possibility that they are our ancestors in a very direct way uh, if you right. look at it from this perspective. Right, Jordan? That's exactly what the scripture says in Genesis 1, the first chapter. The gods came here, and this is why God in Hebrew is El, E-L, but it doesn't say that in the, in the Jewish scriptures. If you go to Genesis 1-1 one, one, in the Hebrew Bible, in the Jewish Bible, it says, In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, not El, not E-L. El is God. It says Elohim. Elohim is a plural. Right. So it's like writing the word G O D comma S. It's a as God is is G uh, God is E L and more than one God in the plural is El Lohim. It's like adding an S onto the word car. Car is one or cars mm-hmm. means more than one. And so in the Bible in Genesis one one it actually says in the whole language of the old Hebrew, what we call Hebrew language, it says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Elohim is a plural, meaning more than one. That's why we read in Genesis one twenty eight when God is creating the first man and woman, it says, and God said, come, let us, U.S., meaning more than one, Mm-hmm. Come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Not mm-hmm. make man, he's already here, let's make him look like us. Let's make him so he looks just like us, it will be like us. He will be in our image and our likeness. Right. Now we've gone a couple of minutes over here, but that is for the sake of editing. <laughs> but if you're listening live, you're uh, definitely thinking to yourself, they're going a little long tonight. Um, but we're not going to go too long. We don't want to certainly uh, wear Jordan out in any way, shape, or form or wear your humble host out. I've got a long week ahead of me, so uh, I am going to bring this to a close. But you can continue to send in your questions, and I will certainly bring them right to Jordan's attention the next time we get together. Yep, and that was good. I know you're always happy to uh, to go through an entire show, which we just did pretty much with questions. Yep, um, yep. But you can continue on also investigating these things by going to jordanmaxwellshow.com. It is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. Remember that. But also there is the research society there, which you can you know, you have to join, and there's a you know there's a one time fee for joining it, but well worth it to go much deeper into all of the subjects we've covered tonight, plus a lot more, including the monetary system, the way government really works, the, uh, you know, the, the, your, your birth certificate. I mean, a whole lot of information there about, uh, society in general, suggested reading. In some cases, uh, articles you won't find elsewhere, links to things that you probably wouldn't find all by yourself necessarily, but all of that and, a way to be able to email Jordan Maxwell himself because, again, it's the only website that's his. You can email Jordan directly there or make a donation straight to Jordan's well-being at jordanmaxwellshow.com. Jordan, I want to thank you for continuing on with this series. This show went a little different than uh, <laughs> some of the others, but I think we well, got to okay. a lot of great information, and uh, I really appreciate your patience with me constantly cutting in to uh, to bring to your attention the questions that are being sent in from the audience because uh, well, this is very important. Well, I love it. That's important. what I do. I'm always happy to be able to be on a show and answer questions the best I can. And like I have said so many times, I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything. I'm just an ordinary man who's by chance happened to, by chance to have been in a company of extraordinarily brilliant people that I all my friends are have been uh, interesting and fascinating people in positions to know dark secrets. And I have learned much from my friends. <clears throat> and so that's why I try and pass that on to my audience. 
the things which I have been privileged to know about and hear about and read about and learn about. It's a fascinating world, and as I've told you before, nothing in this world is what you think it is. You need to go down deeper into every subject, and you will find that there's a world of knowledge you have never been told before. <clears throat> That's what I try to do. Absolutely true. Jordan Maxwell, once again, we appreciate you. We've had the privilege of having a very long series with you, which I advise all you guys to go back and take a listen to every single one of those episodes. And while you're doing that, you can go right over to Jordan Maxwell Show, put them all together in one word, jordanmaxwellshow.com. And like I said, the Research Society is there. Those videos to download are there. The email address, the donate button, the public part of the website, all of it is there at jordanmaxwellshow.com. So I bid you good night, everybody. No matter who you are, where you are, remember this. I am merely Ocelli. All of you are the effect. Be well. <laughs>